Welcome to this video. If you want to learn how you can design and create an interactive dashboard like this, then keep watching because that's what this video is all about. We will start by creating the template in which the dashboard is built. To do this, we go to format and choose a wallpaper. We choose the color black and add some transparency. Then we do the same for the page background. This will give our dashboard a better look. At the end, when we add all the visuals, this will give a great effect. Now we make sure that our page view is set to fit to page, so that we have a view of the whole viewport. Then we align the page to be in the middle and the first layer of the design is created. Then the second layer of the design will be created. For this, we start by inserting multiple shapes within the sheet. In order to look like the dashboard, which was shown in the beginning, we will need a title, two KPIs and a bar chart at the top. Therefore, we add four boxes. Then we insert one bigger box for the filter panels and a few shapes for the other visuals. Now to finalize the template, we make sure everything is aligned and we delete the outline of the shapes and add a shadow. The first thing we add to the template is a title. To do this, we can simply insert a text box. We make sure that the size is big enough and I always prefer to use bold formats to make the text easy to read. Then we delete the background and align it within the box. Next to the title, we will add our first KPI, which is the sales amount. For this, we create a new measure called sales. Within the measure, we use a very basic text function called sum. To use a sum function, we type sum and then open the brackets and add what we would like to sum. In this case, the sales amount. Now the measure has been created. To add it to the dashboard, we put it into a card. To format the card, we change the color, the number of decimal places and the text format. We do the same for the data label. Finally, we delete the background and align the card within the center of our shape. Now we will create the second KPI, which is the number of units sold. For this, we create a new measure. Because all our orders are single products, we can get this number by counting the amount of transactions within our sales file. And now we use a simple trick. We copy the sales KPI to get the same format and paste it into the shape. Then we remove the old measure and replace it with the new one of the number of units sold. At the top, we will insert a mini bar chart with the number of units sold. We insert the bar chart and add the units sold to the values. For the axis, we use the year and quarter. Then we will start formatting the bar chart. The chart will be formatted by changing the colors of the y-axis and the x-axis. At the end, the background is deleted and the chart is inserted into the small box at the right corner. To analyze the product sales, we will also create a bar chart. This time we use a chart that is rotated. We insert a bar chart and use the sales as values. Then we add the product name to the axis. This chart also needs to be formatted. Again, the text formatted is changed to bold and also the color of the bars is changed to dark blue. Finally, we add a title and we delete the background and then we make sure that it fits into the box. To analyze the sales over time, we will use a line chart. We use the sales as values and insert the date hierarchy on the x-axis. We want the sales to be shown on a monthly level. To do this, we should go down two levels in our hierarchy so that we end up at the months. To improve the visual effect of the chart, we need to make some adjustments, just like the other visuals. We remove the axis labels and use the bold text format. We also change the title and the line color. Finally, we remove the background and align the visual in the center of the shape. To analyze the customers, we will insert a table. This table will include the customer name, unit sold and sales. The focus will be placed on the unit sold and this will be done by creating a visual indicator. But before we do this, we should format the table. It is wise to use a very minimal design to do not let the user get distracted from what is in the table. To make it easy to read again, we use bold text and only two grid lines at the bottom and the top. 
we remove the background and align it within the center of the shape. To make it very easy for the end user, we provide visual icons. We can do this by going to conditional formatting in the formatting tab. We select the field we want to use for the icons and now the menu is opened. We define that we want to format by rules that should be applied to the values only. We want to base the icons on the fields of units sold. For the icon layout, we can define the position to be at the left, middle or right of the data. For the alignment, we can choose between top, middle or bottom. Also, there is a wide range of choices for different styles of the icons. We will use the default ones. Now we can start by creating our own rules. Here we can see the three rules that are already set up. For the first rule, we specify that if the number of units sold is less than 3, we want a red icon. If the value is greater than or equal to 3, but less than 9, we want it to be yellow. And finally, we want it to be green if the value is greater than 9. We can choose between percentages on numbers, and because we are talking about numbers of units sold, we choose numbers. And now we can see the icons within our table. The final visual used in this dashboard is a decomposition tree. To create this visual, we will need to specify two things. The first thing is what we want to analyze. This is the sales. And the second thing is what we want to explain it by. And that's the customer names. Now we can start formatting the visual. In the formatting of the decomposition tree, we start by making it more dense. Also, the connector shape is changed to round to improve the look of it. We adjust some colors to make it dark blue and also want the customers to be shown as a part of the total in the nodes. The last step is to delete the background and just like all the other visuals, put it on top of the shape. All the visuals within the dashboard now have been created. To prepare for the filter panels that we want to insert, we add three extra boxes on top of the bigger box. To do this, we only have to create one box and can copy paste this three times. We choose a white color to fill the box and also change the outline to dark blue. We put the outline weight on two to give it a better look. To finalize the dashboard, we will insert a few different filters. In this way, we can easily adjust the dashboard according to what we need. We insert a filter and change it to be a drop down list. For the formatting, we change the color and format of the text. We also add a title and put it in the center. Then we delete the background and align it within the shape. A smart trick to use is to only format the filter once. After you have formatted the filter, you can simply copy and paste it, which saves you a lot of work. Because we have created the filter for the customers, we can copy it and use it for the products and dates as well. We only have to change the field that is added to the filter and give it a title that matches the specified field. So this is the end result for the dashboard. At the top, we have created several KPIs. Within the other visuals, we allow the user to analyze sales by product, customer or date. Also, there are visual icons that show you how the company is doing the moment you open the report. By using the filters, we have made it interactive, which allows the users to change the data according to what they would like to see. If you like this video and you would like to learn more about business analytics in the future, then subscribe to the channel. And thank you for watching.